Hello everybody and welcome to another light novel review. In this video I'm talking about volume number two of the action comedy fantasy isekai series The Eminence in Shadow. This one is written by Daisuke Aizawa with illustrations by Tozai. If you want to pick up your own copy or find out some more information about this series I'll have all that stuff in the description down below. Now, of course, this is volume number two, but as a very, very quick little recap, this is an isekai series. The main character's name is Sid, at least in this world he's been reborn into. Sid is obsessed with the idea of being a uber-powerful individual who influences things from the shadows. He was well on his way to being, well, probably a little ridiculously OP even in our own world's terms before... He met his unfortunate demise, and now, of course, in this world, he is ridiculously OP. However, the, the, there's limits to what he can and will do, and I'm going to talk about that, because that's kind of very central to, I would say, the series in general, but definitely something in this volume. Now, in volume number two, the book is basically split into two parts, both of them, funny enough, being surrounding tournaments. Tournament arc! No, it's not really a tournament arc, but, uh, you know, there's tournaments. Uh, <laughs> however, what's really going on is not so much the tournament. The tournament is just kind of this backdrop. In the first one, we find Shadow Garden is investigating this ancient sanctuary that only opens during this yearly tournament, and they have suspicions that it does tie in to the cult and the demon Diablos. Of course, Sid finds himself there because he's invited by Alpha, who's like, hey, want to have some fun? Come check this stuff out. And of course, well, you know, Sid likes having fun and ends up causing a complete ruckus. The second part is a much more earthly tournament, which just sees a bunch of competitors coming to the area just outside of Sid's school. And the situation going on there is much more of a political situation involving the Oriana Kingdom, which of course Rose Oriana is one of Sid's friends. Do we call them friends? Sid has kind of a weird relationship with people, but eh, that's a whole other thing. In any case, it, she is a member, I would say, of his admirers, shall we say, and uh, it is much more of a story about her and her family and her kingdom and this sort of political situation that seems to be going on beneath the surface. Now let's just get a couple things out of the way. First of all, I gotta say, this series, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah, it's kinda silly and yeah, you know, sometimes you kinda have to just really put the whole realism check on... check? Breaks? I, I don't know. Anyway, y you can't walk into this thinking that it's going to be high literature. This is entertainment for entertainment's sake. However, that said, it's kind of a weird book because I can't help but feeling I'm reading two novels at the same time. On the one hand, I'm reading this really actually pretty good and dark fantasy series about these two secret organizations. One, the cult, which we really aren't still sure what their motivation is, but we can see that they have spent centuries worming their way into all levels of society and that they have some huge goal in mind. And there's even more mysteries and backstory that are developed in this volume that really kind of pique my interest in that whole storyline. And then, of course, we have Shadow Garden, which is the organization that Sid created to, well, he created for, let's face it, shits and giggles, and it has turned into a organization that stands in opposition of the cult. So the way, the same way the cult operates in the background, so does Shadow Garden. So you're reading this kind of, like, neat fantasy with all this sort of backstory about demons and heroes and even like eugenics and the manipulation of uh, ancestry and th there's a lot going on and it's really actually quite a lot of fun and is interesting and there's lots of action 
and I'm invested. And then I'm reading this book about this stupid teenage kid who is a complete chunny, who is obsessed far more with looks and aesthetics than actually really accomplishing anything. In fact, he's got his head so firmly implanted in his rectum that he doesn't even realize that he's already accomplished exactly what he set out to do, which is to create this uber powerful shadowy organization, and that the whole story he concocted about fighting the cult is a legit thing. It's really kind of a weird feeling, but here's the thing, and this is where I've reconciled this to myself, is that in a lot of stories where we have an OP main character, the story does one of two things. Either it creates a sort of mechanic, whether it be magic or a point system or whatever the heck, or it just keeps introducing more powerful opponents. One of those two things to keep the main character challenged, to keep them in check. The eminence in Shadow seems to be kind of different. It is not so much that there is any really powerful person who can keep Sid in check. It's not that his magic is somehow limited or anything like that. It is his own stupid chunny ideals and aesthetics that prevent him from just going all out. And it's kind of weird, but it's also kind of funny. And honestly, it's sort of like, imagine you have this shadowy organization and at the head of it is this mysterious individual who just seems way too cool. Like, he, he seems to really have it all together and even though you know he could just walk all over people, he doesn't because he realizes that there's a useful reason for not doing so. Imagine that he's not cool. <laughs> Imagine that his reasons for doing so and behaving the way he did is because it was so much cooler than just outwardly kicking people's ass. <sighs> it... It sounds horrible to say it. Like, it does. It, it, like, this sounds ridiculous and it sounds awful. And when I was telling CL a bit about it, she's like, it sounds like a main character you want to punch in the throat. And I, and I was like, I can't disagree exactly. But yet there's these moments where you kind of like, yeah, Sid, you're, you're all right. Hmm. <laughs> I will say if you enjoyed the first volume, now I know some people weren't into the shtick of it all or that, you know, the whole shtick of him not quite realizing what the hell's going on gets a little old quick. However, that said, if you enjoyed the first book, I will say I enjoyed the second book more. I felt like the author was a bit better, even at their writing and their storytelling, even though, like the first book, where there were very similar setups, the actual stories being told were very different and had more intricacies to them. The fact that there was only two main storylines in this one, and that they kind of flowed a lot more naturally into each other, uh, also felt like there was a step up in the writing on this one. There was much more backstory and development of the secondary characters, uh, in particular the sort of prime five of the Shadow Garden. Even Sid himself in some ways was made a slightly more enjoyable character because we do see that he pays attention to people, that it's not just, he doesn't just treat the members of Shadow Garden like their pawns and stuff, he does value them and he does notice when they have done things and he gives them little encouragement and praise and you, you kind of are like, okay, well maybe you're not as much of an oblivious dick as what I thought. I would say this second book goes quite a long way to making me more invested in the characters and kind of dulling that sharp-edged chunny annoyance of Sid. 
So overall, The Eminence in Shadow, you know what? It's just a fun series. It's got lots of action. There's, yes, definitely some of the light novel tropes that I, I think it could probably be a little better without, you know, girls competing with each other because they think that they're hotter or their bodies are better or they're sexier or Sid likes them more. Or, you know, I could kind of do without some of that stuff. Uh, but it's thrown in there for a bit of comedy relief because really, uh, other than Sid's delusions, this book is a pretty kind of darkish fantasy. Uh, as I said, there's quite a lot to kind of grab onto if you're into that sort of darker fantasy, you know, these different maneuvering cult, the Shadow Garden and everything like like, there's a lot of actually pretty cool stuff in this series. It's just, when you try to tell people why the main character is the way he is, it just, it, it sounds really not as cool as what it is. Uh, so in any case, if you like the first one, I think you'll actually really dig this second one. As I said, I found myself much more invested in it, and I think it went a long way to adding on to the story elements that really kind of draw me into this like the mysteries and the machinations of the cult and everything else so definitely i would say book two of the eminence and shadow a step up from book one still has plenty of the stuff that you would have enjoyed in book one but uh, like i said i think there's a lot of good stuff in here that is a step up in this video i want to say a special thanks to sean zipper drone 205 FixLab.com, Michaela Werner, and Kazaris for their support on Patreon, which I'm actually now shutting down in favor of YouTube memberships, which if you haven't checked it already, I'll put a card link or CL can put a card link or something about it. Uh, YouTube memberships, there's a little join button now beneath these videos, especially if you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, that help to support the channel and help to support all my other projects like the Light Novel Podcast as well as EnglishLightNovels.com. So for my next review, I'm going to keep the ball rolling on ongoing series. This series I realized is getting its final third and final box set in June, and I'm only two volumes away from completing it. So I thought, well, I got to get my button gear. And so I'm going to be reading part three of Owari Monogatari, the quote-unquote end of the Monogatari series, or at least it was what Nishi Oishin figured was going to be the end of the series until, you know, he continued it a couple years after this. But anyway, whatever. Right now, this is going to be the end of what we have in English. It is kind of a good stopping point because legitimately it, Nishi Oishin thought it was going to be the end. So that's going to be my next review. In the meantime, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that good stuff that YouTube's algorithm just loves and loves and loves. And I enjoy it too. So in the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Till then, bye bye for now.